Today is Wednesday, the 20th of September 2022, Wednesday 28-09-2022. Power Corridor Law FM 103.9. Power Corridor is a non-partisan platform for discussions aimed at gaining clarity, balance, and setting the right agenda for societal change. To join the live conversation or catch up on previous episodes, follow and watch live on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash law FM radio. Instagram is at Law FM Radio. Our Twitter handle is at Law FM underscore radio. You can listen live or on our website from anywhere in the world on www.lawfmng.com. Lawfmng.com. The studio numbers for those who may want to call in when we get to the interactive segment studio numbers are 070 070-322-7738 070-322-7738 or zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine you can call send whatsapp or text messages on those lines too my name is bola oba and I'm available on social media, facebook.com forward slash bola dot oba, facebook.com forward slash bola dot oba, Instagram at bola oba, Twitter and at bola oba. Our Nigerian proverb for today. A frown on the face of a goat will not stop it from being taken to the market. A frown on the face of a goat will not stop it from being taken to the market. The summary analysis of some of the major news headlines today. Court affirms Machina as APC's Yobe North senatorial candidate, a federal high court in Damaturu, capital of Yobe state, has affirmed the candidature of Machina as the bona fide APC senatorial candidate for Yobe North that automatically nullifies any hope of the Senate President to have his name submitted to be APC's candidate in that senatorial district. Wiki Autumn Mackinbay authors Sean PDP campaign Inauguration Wiki Autumn Makinde Authors Sean PDP Campaign Inauguration Only God will give candidate presidential candidate Atiku and indeed the PDP uh, leadership the wisdom to manage the wicked factor only God.
presidential and national assembly elections campaigns kick off officially today. Today is the official date that electioneering campaigns for the office of the president and to the two chambers of the National Assembly, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Today is the official kickoff date of the campaigns. This is where we rest it for this segment. We go on a short break. When we come back, we we'll do a little reintro and formally introduce our guest for today. Thank you. Way back Wednesday on Law FM 103.9. I was just a little girl. I asked Every individual, individual should know about the law and their rights. Law and their rights. Because the law affects every aspect of daily living. Irrespective of age or status. Law FM 103.9 ensures you get to hear the law, talk the law, and know your rights like never before. Like never before. I am Khadija Okunulamidi. Keep listening to Law FM. This is Law FM Radio. For knowledge and entertainment. Entertainment. Your favorite radio station's favorite radio station. Ladies and gentlemen. This is... Rotimi Martins, a.k.a. Lyra of Africa. You're listening to Law FM 103.9. For knowledge and entertainment. Nobila. Listening just got better. Power Corridor on Law FM 103.9. Welcome back to Law. Welcome back to Power Corridor on Law FM 103.9. Power Corridor is a non-partisan platform for discussions aimed at gaining clarity balance and setting the right agenda for societal change to join the conversation live or catch up on previous episodes you want to follow us or watch live on facebook facebook.com for slash law fm radio facebook.com for slash law fm radio instagram is at law fm radio twitter Twitter handle is at lawfm underscore radio. You can listen live on our website from anywhere in the world on www.lawfmng.com. Lawfmng.com. The studio numbers for those who may want to call in and directly interact with our guest or indeed trade ideas with our listening public, the studio numbers are 070-322-77338, or 090-9555-10. Nine five 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 one zero three nine. You can call or send WhatsApp and text messages on those numbers. Today, before we formally introduce our guest, we do what we usually do: a literary intro. And today, we'll be quoting largely from the inauguration speech of President William Ruto of Kenya. I start by first giving the headline. The headline says, quoting from the inaugural address of President William Ruto, Kenya's new, Kenya's new president, on strategies for youth self-employment and sustainable housing program 
using the Jua Kali method. I quote, We shall establish a Ministry of Cooperatives and SME development mandated to ensure that every small business has secure property rights, access to finance, and a supportive regulatory framework. Quotation continues. Furthermore, to deal with the huge challenge of youth unemployment, we will roll out our social and affordable low-cost housing program, targeting an average of 250,000 units a year. This will create opportunities in the entire job market. We will engage technical, vocational, education and training institutions to provide necessary skills to enable the Jua Kali industry supply standardized products for housing program, unquote. What is Jua Kali? Jua Kali is a Swahili word meaning hot sun because the artisans mostly work under the scorching sun. It is a heaven for artisan jobs in Kenya and an excellent way to promote self-employment. The 2019 economic survey showed that Jua Kali sector created 762,000 new jobs in 2018. This constituted 83.6% of total employment. Jua Kali sector does not require a rigorous application process to get started. Unlike most formal jobs, you only need to have the skill and curiosity. Most skills are required, most, most skills are acquired through on-the-job training and apprenticeship. Our guest today started life as a young, underemployed lawyer in Isolo, one of the sprawling slums of Lagos. Believing that there was more he could make of his life, he took a night bus to Abuja, a city where he knew nobody but God Almighty in whom his confidence was and is still based. Long story short, Today, he is the founder and chief executive officer of the biggest housing show north of the Kalahari Desert, if not in the whole of Africa, the Abuja International Housing Show. I met him fortuitously just over two years ago at the UN Habitats World Urban Forum WUF10 at Abu Dhabi, the federal capital city of United Arab Emirates, UAE, where as busy and well sought after participant as he was amongst both the Nigerian and international delegations, he was impassioned with the story of how the then visionary MD CEO of Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, architect Ahmed Dangiwa, invited me as the founder of a housing cooperative society each in London, UK, and Lagos to the biannual United Nations Festival of Creative Housing Solution and Residential Com Urban Planning. He is so passionate about the provision of dignified mass housing for Nigerians through the multidisciplinary housing development advocacy network. Good day, Festus Adebayo. Hello, Festus. I hope the network is not playing up. Hello, Festus. Well. I can hear you very well. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, but I hope. Okay then. Hello, can you hear me now? I can hear you very well. Can you hear me? I can hear you well enough now. Sorry, we are having a bit of a challenge, a, a, a glitch of a sort okay. on the console. I can, hear you. I can hear you very well. I am happy to be on this program. Ah. I must comment what you are doing. It's a new dawn in our great country. Thank you very much. Like you. 
Thank you very much. We are, we are quite honored and, and happy to have you as a guest. More so on a on a non-partisan uh, on a non-partisan topic that is universally beneficial to all Nigerians. And like I and like I stated in my introduction, you are one person that I know amongst many others uh, in the Housing Development Advocacy Network. Uh, you are one person who is sold out. So, art and so on affordable housing. How can we help our politicians, especially leading politicians, presidential candidates, gubernatorial candidates, how can we take them to the point where they can see and emulate the passion delivered in the speech of President Bruto? Thank you. Thank you, Chief uh, Bolaba. I have said it's a new dawn. Thank you. Where our electorate have to ask questions from politicians, those who are asking for our vote for presidential, for governorship, even for chairmanship of the local government. This program is very great. It will help us to enlighten the electorate on what they should have the politicians who are today asking for their vote. It has become a normal norm in Nigeria that people just come and make all sorts of promises. Some are not even bothered about housing. By the way, they are not even conscious of what is the problem about. They permit me to start by explaining to our audience on what exactly is affordable housing. Housing, to start with, is referred to the construction and assigned usage of houses or buildings whether individually or collectively, for the purpose of shelter. Affordable housing, therefore, is housing that the household can pay for while she has the money left over for other necessities like food, transportation, and health care. That means that what is considered affordable depends on a household income. And that is the focus today. And that is what we say, we want to encourage Nigerians, our electorate, to ask those who are seeking for their vote to please show them what they want to do in the area of affordable housing. I've just heard from you, she's gone out back. We are you ready? inaugural speech of His Excellency President Ruto of Kenya. We are in good housing as a priority because he understands the meaning, the importance of what housing can do to transform the economy. He understands the importance of housing for the GDP growth and the productivity. He understands the importance of housing to job creation. And that is why he put housing as a priority. You can see his plan. He did not just mention 260,000 houses annually, but he went further to give details of how he is going, his government going to achieve that goal. Who among the presidential candidates, governorship candidates, now is talking of affordable housing? It is time to charge our electorate to ask them what they will do for housing. It is time to let our electorate know that we housing 
we can reduce the gravity of the banditry, insecurity in the country. A man that has a house to live will be thinking of how to get married. When he gets married, he has a child. And you go and invite him to come and join Boko Haram. He will not answer you. Because he will not want to just leave the wife and the child and go to our own destination. That is why housing is key. That is why Nigeria in, in many respects of hard people. So, sorry, my brother, because we have a limited time, it's just, uh, we think Guna is, uh, is enough, but to be honest with you, from experience, it's not usually enough. So let me be interjecting with some valuable uh, questions before we open the lines to, uh, to our listeners. You are the coordinating uh, personality of a very strategic advocacy group. That is the Housing Development Advocacy Network. It is a non it is a non governmental organization. However, for me, uh, as somebody who uh, is privileged to be uh, amongst uh, the people there, it is for me the platform that has the most uh, the 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 widest aggregation of a built environment professionals in Nigeria from the very high level of professionalism the architects of this world the um, the uh, engineers mechanical structural electrical to even the artists now what can a body such as the housing development advocacy do at this juncture especially this time when politicians would want to come out how can you engage some of these uh, politicians either enlighten them or find a way of letting them realize the importance of construction and housing in how they can transform society yes number one Housing Development Advocacy is working on papers that will be submitted to all the presidential candidates. Fantastic. We submit proficient paper on housing in Nigeria detailing the following. Number one, housing situation of Nigeria. Number two, housing as a woman. Number three, we give them a paper detailing housing as economy development tools. Hmm. We give them a paper detailing housing and X of citizens. We give them a paper on housing policy of the next government. This is one of the things we intend with. And the house, we have started our campaign on what we leverage, ask the politicians. Hmm. Hmm. Such as we so, uh, uh, le le uh, an average person listening to you now will be thinking uh, in the backdrop of the fact that the Naira is perpetually depreciating, building materials are going up, can I ever own a house, can I ever have access to, to a mortgage, can I even afford it, uh, and you know, uh, people are befuddled, they don't even have uh, you, you see people, they speak more on the on the side of hopelessness than even having a game plan, like coming together, being in a cooperative society, or doing things, and letting politicians know that if you meet us this much halfway, we can do this much ourselves. I know 
I know housing development advocacy network has uh, programs, seminars, and many of your professionals also uh, do seminars. How can we well up the body of knowledge amongst our people? Because to first, we need to even enlighten our people that many of these things are doable. How can we go about it? I know you do a, I know you do a TV program. I know you have a very vibrant website. Uh, but we still have to do more to sensitize our people and raise their understanding of the challenges of the industry. And now, uh, those challenges can be over overcome. One of the message we are taking around, and we are going to push to Nigerians is the important question of what does the candidate aim to do differently than other administrations since the whole method is obviously not working. Mm. We are all aware of the big issue you are just made you are just said facing the housing sector now, which is rocketing price of building materials and this is partly because many of them are imported. What will the candidate do to address this? These are questions we are going to throw out. These are the questions we are going to put in the mind of Nigerians. The other time, where the political party that is a present in power came, they told us they will be providing in their manifesto one million houses annually. We fail. We could not have them. How they intend to achieve this? What are the strategies? There was a time. time. So, sorry, my brother. There was a time. I know you, amongst many other professionals, were invited to the to the villa. A program was launched then. Um, it was a program that was built around the family on phone. A million naira houses. Ah, so what what has happened to to that program at this juncture? I must use this opportunity to say that it was a good initiative by the vice president, who is the chairman of the economy council, national economy council, who then was in charge or direct control of family owned fund. But family owned fund is not directly under him anymore; it's under the family. It's under the Federal Ministry of Finance. The arrangement there was that the governor will give free land. The governors will assist in providing access to primary infrastructure. And then... As it was done in a state like Nasarawa, I know Nasarawa did one. Uh, I know yes. Kano. We have one in Nasarawa where we have two, uh, two bedrooms for 3.5 million. But we could not go far in this because there's no political will. Hmm. A tree does not make the fight. The office of the VP alone and the family offer cannot alone deliver it. In fact, majority of our professionals also believe it is not possible because by the way, they also want to be making their profit. And that is why at this time we want to talk to whoever is coming. What is your political will? How do we intend to address the problem of inflation that is tormenting our sector? How do you attend to solve the problem of interest rates? Speaking of, sp speaking of inflation, of uh, first, us, first us, speaking of inflation and interest rate, I know that amongst the, amongst the professionals in the Housing Development Advocacy Network, there are some outstanding professionals who have come out with using local local materials you know uh, increasing the the percentage of local materials in our uh, in our construction works especially housing projects uh, how well how well are uh, public policy and uh, molders engaging with these innovative ideas from these professionals let me see go back so the political win I mentioned to you. In 1999, when Olusegun Passenger came from Ota, 
He came from that type of house you have just mentioned to me. That was where he was living. And when he came, he did a lot to repackage Nigeria building and rural research. He encouraged them to do a lot in local building materials. And I remember then, Nibri Director General, Professor Fuegu, delivered what we call Made in Nigeria House. So I'm saying again, as we go into the election in 2023, the governors, the presidential candidates must tell us what they want to do differently. A lot of, because we don't have the political will. That is why we have not been able to drive what you are saying. We are here, we reduce the amount of imported content, imported material. God, is, God has blessed this country. We have a lot of material that can enable us to have made in Nigeria houses. But because of our nation, because of our attitude, we love something that's luxurious, something that is, we have decided to forget our home and reduce the cost. And that is why I thought I just mentioned to listeners that we need a political will. You hear, you hear who Festus, Festus. Uh, my brother, sorry about that. Uh, this program, the beauty of this program is the uh, proliferation and proliferation of ideas, especially from our listeners. And I know today, because you are the one guesting, a number of the professionals on the Housing Development Advocacy Network would, may, may also want to call in. Let me quickly reel out the numbers. For those who may want to directly interact with you or who may want to put ideas out there on how we can sustainably solve this problem. But before I even read out the numbers, let me give you one shocker that I got through the Housing Development Advocacy Network. There was a day a gentleman, uh, one of the members of, of, of the forum, posted a house inside the redeemed camp. Uh, built with um, comp comp compact uh, lateritic materials and you know aesthetically fantastic i didn't believe it and the price was the price was almost like you know two bedroom i think uh, about two years ago it was advertised for two point something million naira. and i still think at this juncture those houses are going for as less as you know four million or under four million anyway i drove to the room I drove to the redeem camp myself and I saw the structures. Fantastic, you know, aesthetics, uh, the layout, the and I, and I was wondering what is our cultural baggage? Why Nigerians will see a house like this, like the houses most of us lived in, most of the council flats we lived in in London. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm telling you, and that much beautiful and Nigerians are reticent. But let me let me read out the numbers so that our, our listeners will also enrich the program with their own ideas. The numbers to call are zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight or zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine. Good evening, caller. Your name, please, and where you are calling from. Hello, caller. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Our first us, Adobayo is all yours. I remember 2001, I read the book on how to address this matter quickly. You see, many Nigerians don't have the, the money to build the house. But there is this adage that I know work for many landlords in Lagos here. And the adage is, that's what my friend teacher taught me. <laughs> now, you go to Ikorodu, you see a mechanic with just two rooms. Go back to see this same man, 
Seven years after the two rooms will have become seven, eight, eight rooms. rooms. Yeah, yeah, right, sir. That's how they build in Lagos. Most people don't have enough money. For God's sake, where do they want to get uh, two point something million, three million, three point five or two bedrooms like they just can't afford it. You remember in 1979 when Baba, 1980, when Baba Jacob did bought his own uh, so housing scheme. It was sold for 7,000 Naira. And you Which was a lot of money there too. Naira deposit. See how people of Lagos shouted and said, Baba Jacob, continue to make home, Baba Jacob, 1,000 Naira. Today, that 7,000 Naira is about 15 million Naira in the solo. I think what the government should do if they want to really help the masses, provide the land, provide the road, leave the rest to, to Nigeria, and sort themselves. I can't you go back to the full room. If you leave the road, you go back to the full room. If you leave the road, you go back to the full room. If you get online, like, thank you. That's the answer. Uh, I, I, I really want to thank the last caller because. Uh, conurbations like uh, conurbations like uh, Songo, uh, Ijoko, many of those conurbations parts of the Korobu and many aspects developments in the Greater Lagos area actually took life from the kind of uh, explanation that the gentleman gave. First, us, how would you want to respond to the caller's uh, idea? I must, I must thank that uh, great caller. Uh, there's what we call service land. <laughs> That is exactly what the caller have just asked the government to provide. Provide a service plan somewhere that people can have access to. They can solve their own problems themselves. So that they will be building it little by little. Look at that beautiful proverb. He said, Dear, 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 that the board, let, let me translate it. Please let me translate it for uh, non Yoruba listeners. Uh, yes. That the board gradually builds its nest. Uh, the board does not just contact con contact us, or uh, the board would one one piece of uh, 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 this at a time, and gradually the board builds its nest. Go ahead, please. And and she go now. I inform you that the redeem calm you mentioned. I was there. I was invited. And the peculiarity that made it easy for them is that they have access to the free land of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Mm. Once mm. you want to build a house, the Redeemed Christian Church of God gives you free land. And that's what we are saying. If you cannot have a repeat of what this religious body is doing at the larger level of the government, at the local level, at the local, at the state level, the barrier to home ownership will be removed. Hmm. We now face the issue of finance, mortgage. But come on, in my village. We have another caller for you. We, I'm sorry, oh. sorry, but I will give precedence to our callers. Okay. Caller, good evening. Your name and where you are calling from, please. I am so good from Bagada, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, please pardon me. I'm going to digress. I'm the one that you offered scholarship last week. I did not receive your message, sir. I so see. I have. The number that was sent to me, I sent a WhatsApp message to that to that number that this is Bella Oba. Uh, uh, the the studio manager will note the number now. It ends with four four nine four. We know the number after this program. I will send you a WhatsApp message again, and we take it on from there. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, uh, first of all, I'm sorry. Uh, the callers on the program, we just do it yes. to to add value to society. Okay then. Okay. As I said, redeem, what what redeem is doing in that aspect of it by the express way. If government can key to it, state government, local government, the problem will be reduced. To go a long way. Give some in Malaysia in my town, the carpenter there her holding go. The bricklayer there her holding go. Hmm. All that they can just have an access to land, the house will be ready little by little. Hmm. We have overflowed this problem too much of home ownership, and this is like this because of the problem of access to land. Let me hold you for a while because I want you to reiterate and, and, and emphasize the point you made now. 
before you got into alluding to the fact that you visited the the redemption camp project you said that what would be what would be a good solution would be for the government to provide a uh, serviced land or you know do the infrastructure basic infrastructure like yeah and let people so the, and you then and you then moved it you then moved it to to the practical example of the redemption camp and you are now saying that if local governments and state governments indeed federal government in the federal capital area where it owns the land can replicate something like this nigerians are not lazy not to be able to solve their own because they would have been incentivized to complete the journey thank you ah, it's sounding more interesting uh yeah, no, sorry numbers to call zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight or zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine Sorry about that, Festus. Uh, is all yours. If that can't be solved, the problem will be. I'm not going to 2023. The politicians, those who are seeking for votes, Nigeria must take time. Era came of change. The era of asking for 2,000, 3,000, bribery, all those things should go down. Citizens should be sent aside to follow issue-based conversation and not sentimental ones. Those are those that appeal to religion. Those are those that appeal to tribe. And those that appeal to religion. We don't need that now. We need the problem solver. We need person who have solution to the problem. We should engage them. We have just to find a solution here. We have not spoken about the financing aspect or the mortgage aspect. We just provide solution in the aspect of the land. The Yoruba people say, be a big party grown in new is share, is share to say the issue of land is removed from home ownership. The problem is almost solved. Mm. And you know the inherent advantage of even the government getting involved with the land provision, even when they will take their money back down the road. The immediate advantage is that from get go, if the government provides the land, the land becomes a valuable asset that the those who build on it and the government can actually profit from in the future because it it, it will have an inherent uh, transferable value because of proper documentation uh, because you know one of the one of the reasons for poverty in many developing countries as it as it is is that even many of the many of the assets that are used in some relatively advanced societies as as a equity man, they don't they don't have the inherent equity value here Zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight or zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine. First us what can what are some of the ideas that we can pass to our people to even make them uh, self-mobilize and self-help? Yes, one of the ways to go is what uh, one of we are going to discuss uh, with Nigerian Union of Journalists tomorrow in Abuja as uh, the LUJ SEC with the launching uh, cooperative. And that is where I met you, Steve Bonaupa. <laughs> I know that you share the idea, you know I 
I really have to I really have to give it to the expert to, to speak to our people because every opportunity one has one has uh, one has uh, uh, we have a caller caller good evening your name and where you are calling from please uh, good evening Mr. Kola uh, my name is Shola I'm just a fast one I'm calling from our channel the the issue with everybody cannot own a house anyway oh yes but yes but even as people are even investing in land the issue of God as a for investors even the bank, you cannot so own the bank, the bank knows, the bank knows this. So you can't even buy an estate, this estate will tell you, you don't pay at the particular time. Uh, sorry, you, when you are paid, you are paid, my bro, now, please, please call back. The, the background noise is somewhat nauseating, to be honest, it may be nauseating, the background noise, please. And I know a lot of is quite uh, a good contributor that I always share is when he calls in. Uh, he's talking about uh, the the challenges. I, I wouldn't know if, the, if you people face the same challenge in, Abu, in the greater Abuja area, but in Lagos, the problem of uh, uh, the problem of fraud and uh, <laughs> in Lagos. How, how is the situation in the greater Abuja area? Yeah, but yeah, it's also a terrible, a terrible area when it comes to uh, fraudulent practices in the area of real estate. Uh, it's a terrible one. I think we have to even have a session on that on this program. <laughs> uh, but I will tell you. You want to give examples of some of the some of the things that people need to to uh, look out for when they are getting into real estate transactions in Abuja. It would be nice just for a public enlightenment of a sort. If you are listening to me and you want to buy a land directly in the you must be very careful. Uh, the land belongs to the minister. Uh, you ask for the title of the land. You are giving the local government title. We call it council title. You have to be careful. <laughs> the title council have to be documented before it can be valid for any transaction. And we observe that some people are working with some of those local governments, Abaji local government, Kuji local government, Hamas local government. Before even 1999, those who left around 2000, up to 2010, here are some of the documents of this land. With them, especially those lands along the houses of the airport, Rube, and some other area. On that note, if you are buying yeah, Lube, land, Lube is the first developing area now. Thank you. Get a open area because that is the road you use. You must pass fly before you enter. We get the road to the airport. Mm. Everybody wants to. So on that note, the type, the pay, you must ensure that you go to Aegis, Abuja Geographical Information Service before you can make any payment to that to that person that wants to the land mm. for you. And if you go along the axis of Wama village, Masaka, Maraba, and you are listening to me, you also have to be very careful. Abuja has a boundary. And then from the boundary of Abuja, you enter Masaka. Masaka. If any chief, any chief sells you a land, that land is not valid. You must go to other national geographical information to confirm your authenticity. So, I must tell you, it is not only in Lagos that this problem of uh, counterfeit land document is pronounced. It's also more pronounced here. In fact, in the recent time, what we advise people want to buy land, if it's not a direct application from the, F the FCC minister, please, please, before you make any payment, be careful. And if you want to be a little bit safe, you can buy into a housing testing. We are already developers are building some numbers of houses. But some of those developers who does not want to involve themselves in building the houses from the beginning to the end. Oftentimes, they want to do what we call site and services. With the site and services, what you do is you get the land, you pay for the land, you 
tell you they are building a prover, and then you start building the house little by little in line with the, with the building approval they have. I, I, have, have, they have. I have another call for you. Uh, caller, good evening. Your name and where you are calling from, please. Uh, hello, caller. Hello, uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Your name and where you are calling from, please. Okay, uh, my name is Daniel. I'm calling from Abuja. Uh, oh, fantastic. Uh, first of is all yours. So, Daniel. What would you like to say? Our uh, guest is all yours. Go ahead, please. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, first of all, let me, let, me, let, me, first of all, let me comment the housing guru that he has been giving us some beautiful insight as to how the housing situation in the country can be solved. The issue of service plan is actually a novel idea and if implemented, it will actually go a long way in addressing the housing deficit in the core that is being expressed experiencing in the country right now. Uh, but concerning this, concerning going into this, 2023 election, I was going to ask, can we actually get someone like just the president of Kenya did during his inauguration speech, where he outlined all his agenda to providing housing? That is my question for the experts. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did, did you hear that, uh, first us? Thank you, uh, uh, Daniel. And that is exactly the, the one of my reasons for coming on the program today. Nigerians, Nigerians, those who are CBC, who are listening to me, if you want a better Nigeria for this country, please check the manifesto of that your candidate. Please check the manifesto. And not only that, you see it here that is going to build one million houses. Annually, please uh, go further to know how he said to, uh, to deliver the one million houses with inflation in the country, with the crisis of forest, with uh, the rise in the price of the materials. And uh, you go further if you have privilege to interact with such a uh, candidate to have. How does he really, really want to make a difference? Because somebody else has done this before. And by the way, at the global economic pro crisis, how does he want to solve the problem? How does he want to use how F to uh, First of all, uh, you know, I, I've always thought about this, and if anybody could pull it together in Nigeria, if anybody could pull it together in Nigeria, you are one of the very few persons that can put it together. Like the media would uh, invite presidential candidates and governorship candidates to debate. Is it possible for a group like the Housing Development Advocacy Network to just have some dedicated nights? Say th uh, the three or four main presidential candidates. Let them come and talk to the experts in such, in such a non-governmental organization's platform interact with them not so much because you people want to uh, puncture whatever is their policy on housing but at least to interact and, and brainstorm on solutions what do you say to that you have done so great uh, it's like you are reading my mind that you have to put it I have to put it publicly uh, known to you let the listener hear this clearly and that is one area we have to work together already. Abuja Sheba will come out of an industry. We sign a MOU with us to have a particular night where we get the front liner, hmm, the front runner for the upcoming Fantastic idea. Election yes. and also prognosis election. But I'm throwing it to you 
I have no belief in that idea. This is also suggested it now. You, this platform has to be part We will support. We will support it. We will support it because this is very important. Let's hear it's from them and let the professionals also give them ideas. It's, 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 it's going to be. A, it's going to be a fantastic forum. In fact, let me give this opportunity to let the listeners know that uh, Eastern has been calling on professionals in the housing industry, construction industry at large, to participate actively in politics. If you have a friend who is an engineer, who is interested in politics, he needs financial help, he needs media help, let's give it to them. If you know you don't have that capacity of uh, going for election. By the time I come, so it was Edmund Bob that said it, and I called. He said, what good people suffer from not participating in politics is to be ruled by food. Hmm. We cannot continue to pour the hands. Housing is key. As far as this particular election is concerned, and for the professionals in this sector, including Chief Bola, Hubbard, the anchor of this very important platform, we must all go and mass and tell the electorate that housing is key. That's one of the things they must I, I will get in touch with you. I will get in touch with you after okay. after the show. If you if you guys are planning room for Abuja, it's not, it will not be a bad idea to see how we can replicate it in Lagos and it's gonna be built around somebody like you because you have the networking assets, you have the professionals from from the honorable minister for works and housing to commissioners of almost commissioners for housing across across uh, all the states of the federation to leaders of professional uh, uh, associations and organizations institutions of surveyors uh, engineers and whatever uh, uh, first us this is where we have to hand it my studio manager is already counting me down but i must be honest with you this will not be the last time we will visit this topic before the electioneering campaigns you know, uh, run out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, listeners. Bye for now. Okay. okay. Our guest today, Festus Adebayo, is a one-man mopo when it comes to uh, housing issues in Nigeria, especially affordable housing, provision of affordable housing. It's been successive governments. Uh, he deals with the professionals. He, he runs a platform apart from his own business that is uniquely successful. Uh, he runs the Abuja International Housing Show, but he has this. Uh, uh, he has this um, NGO type organization called the Housing Development Advocacy Network. And many of the ideas traded on that platform can be very useful to society. My name is Bola Oba. It's been another episode of the show. The manager, producer, and big mama of the show, as usual, is Waire Ufigo. Thank you. This is my this is my Nigeria's number one. Once you're